Just a little quick announcement before we start the show. Uh, we've been nominated for uh, Best Podcast at the Adult uh, Australian Adult Industry Awards. Uh, we will put the link in the description to vote for us. Voting starts on the 3rd of March. So, uh, yeah, I mean, if you enjoy the show and you enjoy us, we would love your vote. And, uh, yeah, thanks and uh, enjoy the show. Alrighty, guys, welcome back to Sex with Cat and Mark. This week we have Anastasia from Voodoo Ropes. So she is a Shibari specialist and I'm so glad to have you here. So Anastasia, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very glad to be here with you. <laughs> and so my, my first question is because I've actually taken some training from you myself when I was over in Mexico, um, but I'm sure everyone's first question is, what is Shibari? How would you explain it to our listeners? <laughs> Well, this is actually not an easy question. Uh, in general, shibari is a Japanese art of rope, art of tight binding. But since uh, shibari is now everywhere in the world, it is very different everywhere, depending on the person who does it, the person who receives it. And it's always about what you put into the word shibari. But originally it is it is just the art of tight binding. And uh, it you might know it from the BDSM scene, but at the same time, it doesn't have to be in it. It can be meditative, it can be fashion, it can be just sensual, or it can be very playful and has that power dynamic very easily. Because <laughs> this is what I noticed. When I first started Shibari, it was from that very, like let's say, traditional like BDSM side of things, and who I was getting taught from was very traditional. You had to tie like a certain direction. You had rules if you cross rope, you need, like there were very specific rules where I feel like your style is much more modern. Uh, it goes into, as you said, more that meditative space. There's all of the fashion and photography space. So how would you describe your style, would you say, of Shibari? Well, I'd say that I take the basics that I still can do, right? But I modify them a little bit so they get a little bit closer to people with whom I'm doing the, them because to most people who come to classes they want to use shibari for like to deepen connection with the partner and I noticed that when I tie on myself because du during COVID I tied on myself a lot and I noticed that like my connection with my body became way better through rope so the the style, like what is different about my style is basically that I concentrate on that connection, not on the mm. complicated knots. I try to show the basics and teach people how to use them for different purposes. Because once you know them, you can go into every corner of whatever you want. And uh, if you go into the darkest BDSMs that I don't teach, it's totally fine. As long as you agree with the basics that I show. <laughs> And yeah, say, I think that's so interesting. I think that's a I think that's a really important message because I I've seen this. I think some people get lost in the technique and kind of forget why they're actually doing shibari. Sometimes, like I think sometimes mm -hmm. with when I'm with a girl, it's like the simplest tile, the simplest knot can bring about a much deeper connection than something like super complicated when you're in your head thinking about and like going through the steps. So I like. Yeah. Uh, I feel I like that the uh, complicated knots, if people just want to start and they start from something complicated, they don't build a connection because they're thinking all the time while they're tying. Mm. So you can't really connect if you do that. You can just, mm. th this will be training. This will not be uh, shibari, <laughs> right? The experience. Exactly. Yeah, sorry, I <laughs> I got disconnected. So um, every day, I think this was just really bad timing. Every day, you kind of have to like log back into the Wi-Fi for it to like. Oh, oh no way! I know. <laughs> yeah, and I think it just disconnected yeah, just, <laughs> just then. But it oh, should be good shit. now. The Wi-Fi is actually pretty good here, but I think that was it. Okay. But, um, yeah. Okay. Um, what 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 did I miss? What did I miss? Um, that's all right. We 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 stopped kind of when you got um, disconnected. Yeah. Okay. So we're just asking about. <laughs> sorry. We're just asking about her style. So we we stopped after that. Um, style, but I guess Shibari my next, styles. yeah, Shibari style. So I guess my next question, yeah, I guess my next question is Anastasia, like, how did you, how did you find Shibari? Like how long have you been doing this for? How did you get into it? Ooh, well, I've been doing it since I think 2016, but that was yeah. just like my encounter with Shibari. I, I found it 
thanks to my history class in the university. There were some scrolls and there were some tied up people on the scrolls. And I asked my professor, hey, what's what's this? And uh, he was um, he was really into not just explaining. He sent me an, an email with a lot of PDFs, uh, works of other people about the uh, like, um, let's say, relationships in the Edo period in Japan and also about the Shibari, Hojo Jutsu. And one of the uh, recent works of, um, I don't remember the name now, but a woman who went to Japan to explore the sensuality in Shibari. And she wrote like um, quite a big paper on it. And I, I read it and I got really interested in how you get all these psychological aspects out of it. And... Um, mm-hmm. I started practicing with some friends and uh, of course I didn't get deep into it and I couldn't find teachers or even like decent videos. It was not, it was not easy. I didn't really know what to Google to. It was <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, I also felt very uncomfortable to go to some uh, like um, to workshops, uh, especially mm-hmm. one-on-one with some guys from, from, from Russia. Cause they didn't, I didn't have connections at all. I couldn't ask other people if they're good or not. Like, no idea. But when I went, when I started traveling, when I went to Japan, I started getting into it more and more. And people were really interested in the idea of like exploring Shibari. And uh, this really helped me to tie more, to not be scared of uh, creating new ties, you know? Yeah. And uh, not just like completely new, take the basics and uh, modify them and make something, sometimes just make a piece for like a fa- fashion photo shoot with yeah. rope. Yeah. I'm really so curious. Just, um, yeah. When you like, you said you've seen it in like a university textbook. What kind of made you sort of like look at someone tied up and be like, yeah, I want to, I want to do that. Like, it's just so, it's so random. You know, I didn't really have the, at first, I didn't have the thought of I want to do that. I mostly had the thought of I want to learn about this a little more. But then once I read that that paper, I can send you a name of it later if you're interested. I was like, oh, wow, this is like the the feelings and like emotions are so, so like just different from whatever I, I thought about before and uh, not something that I would I, I would think of at all. So I got interested in tying not really being tied because i didn't know anybody who would want to tie so i was like Mm. okay i'll tie and then maybe eventually i'll find somebody who who ties (laughs) that's interesting because that's what that was going to be my question is when you saw this picture were you thinking i'd love to do the tying would i like to be tied so you started off as a rigger at what point in this journey did you then like what did it start with self-tying or did you then end up finding someone that could tie for you like at what point did you um start to become like a bunny or bottom and, and get tied well i never really became a model for shibari it's just that i started tying more and then when i traveled i met up with riggers from like almost every country that i visited and mm-hmm. um there i used to get tied by those people that i met because we were meeting up i was sometimes recording some youtube videos with them and uh that was really nice to feel the style on myself Mm. because i always tell my students that you can't tie unless you have been tied at Mm. least if you tie yourself you know if you have no idea how it feels it's it's kind of wrong of you to to do it (laughs) Uh, you need to at least imagine some things how, how it feels not just imagine knowing. So uh, that's why I thought that I really need to try. And uh, I I like being tired. It's just that it is sometimes very difficult to trust a new person in this, mm. especially if they don't have uh, developed social media or they're not um, like very public, then mm. I would uh, probably not really get into it. But <laughs> for example, yeah. now I went to Japan and I took classes with... Uh, Kinoko Hajime, and he offered to tie me in the end. We were like almost in the end of the class. And I was like, sure, let's do it. Because I know that mm. everything's going to be very nice if he does it. And I'll feel good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because it's a very, for those that don't know, it is a very, um, it can be a very personal, intimate experience. You are very vulnerable. So for those that don't know and don't know much about Shibari, <clears throat> 
it's some of these advanced ties. It's not just, okay, your hands are tied on the bed. It's your, your hands are tied, your body's tied, and you're getting like suspended into the air. Like there, there's a ring above you or there's a point above you and you can be like inverted. You can be upside down. Like it can be somewhat dangerous as well. Um, so yeah, it's, it can be very hard as the model getting tied to put that amount of trust in someone that you perhaps don't even know that well. So yeah, it's, it's definitely a challenging experience, but I think that's a part of it that makes it so intimate and so interesting. Yeah, With I think that danger. Do people like has that happened? Sorry, haven't people like died from shibari or am I like I don't from- know about if people have died from shibari. I hope not, but uh, there are people who had injuries from shibari. Absolutely, and uh, it's not all because the riggers do wrong things. Sometimes models don't say anything until the last moment, and then the rigger doesn't notice. And then they ask a model what's going on and then they just don't feel anything and they think it's okay because sometimes you're, because there is no blood flow, so you don't feel. And some people enjoy the feeling of not feeling. Like in my practice, I don't do that because I'm really scared to hurt somebody. Uh, but yeah, some I don't know people, if I could be hanging from the air. Hanging <laughs> well, from the air is really very comfortable if you are in the right position with and, and if you are with the right person tying. It can be like a hammock, you know, or like, like a swing too. It can be really nice. Uh, but uh, depends with whom you're doing it. Because some people do all these uh, ties when they hang models and the models enjoy the feeling of having no blood flow. But some of them miss the sensation of the nerve damage while they don't feel anything. And then there is a, an injury. Yeah. So it is yeah. very, yeah, shibari is actually very dangerous if it, if it goes to suspension. Mm. Absolutely. Super dangerous. <laughs> yeah. No, 100%. And that's why, like, safety is one of the biggest things that always gets taught in shibari. So I know even Anastasia, I think your site even has, like, a free um, safety guide for memory. Or yeah, you have, like, a free does, safety guide. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it, it's, it's very important. Um, so I'm curious, like, so you saw in a textbook someone being tied you started this journey. At what point did you go from that to like, okay, this is interesting, this is fun, it's something I'm trying out, to get to the point where you think this is what I want to kind of dedicate myself to, devote myself to, I want to teach this, and this is what I want like my, my life to be about. How did that transformation Ooh. take place? Well, you know, it happened during COVID. <laughs> yeah. So I got my master's and then I was going to find a real job. But then COVID started and finding a real job became really hard. And uh, I was like, okay, I am really enjoying the ties and I do have a small following. So why not? I Why don't I try to get more into it? And uh, I started self-tying way more. And I started connecting with more people just like online about it, talking about it. And uh it turned out that people really need uh, some guidance in very, very simple things. And I thought that even with my limited experience, I actually could provide it and I could learn more while doing that. So mm-hmm. during COVID, I got really, really serious about Shibari because I wanted to, to help more people like open up using Shibari because mm-hmm. it's a very good tool to to love yourself a little more because you get this Mm. time with yourself. You like maybe have a nice setup for some (laughs) self-tying and uh, you just get to be with yourself for some time and enjoy it. And then of Mm. course can be with your partner. You don't have to be alone. Right. But we're talking about the start. So that was COVID. Most people were alone. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. Like it is, you mentioned the word like meditative before. I, I agree with that. I, I think there's there's something that's almost difficult to put into words when it comes to shibari when it's, I mean, you're talking about soul ties. For me, I'm often thinking with a partner, but it, it's, yeah, it's a chance, as you said, to really be present in that moment. It's mm-hmm. it's really hard, I think, for the model or for yourself or yourself tying to think about anything else in that moment when you're feeling the sensation of rope like bind you, you feel like comforted and, and small. And and especially if you, as you mentioned, something like suspension, when you're able to let go, you're like free in the air. I, I think it is a incredibly meditative process that brings you into the moment and allows you like to process certain emotions. 
so yeah, it's that's amazing. So COVID essentially um, started your journey into this a little bit more. Yeah, that's that, that's very true. Uh, kind of thanks to COVID. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So when did you, you, do when you started else? teaching? Oh, sorry. Go on. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, did you do something else um, before before all of this? Like, did you have a different job? Yeah, I was a, so I teach Japanese language. So I was a Japanese teacher and, uh, and I was a tour guide. So when I lived in Kyoto, I was, uh, guiding people. I had some, uh, like private tours for, to secret bars that, that they can't find by themselves, you know, like speakeasy oh, ties. Nice. Yeah, Kyoto and, is very nice. I yeah. love Japan. So that, and I'm really into the, the culture and history. So I was guiding. So in the daytime, I had the tour to shrines and temples. And in the nighttime, I had tours to the secret bars. That's, <laughs> That's cool. So do you still do that now? Uh, now, no. I think that in, in Mexico, especially in Playa, there's no really secret bars, you know? <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah. You're probably not secret ones. In Japan, a little bit more. It's a bit, well, sure. There's a lot in going on in Japan. Yeah. Yeah, if I was to in Mexico City, I would probably do something like that. But again, here, not really good for guiding. And there's so many tour guides here to guide people to. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. When, when you started teaching, what do you think were some of the misconceptions people had? Because I, I noticed with your classes, like you do get a lot of people in that are completely like fresh to Shibari and it's like this new thing yeah. that they're trying out, which I think is a great thing. Like I haven't often been to other places where there's so many like people coming in with these like open mindsets and fresh to Shibari and very new to it. So what do you think in your classes were maybe some challenges or like misconceptions people had about, about the art? Well, yeah, I get a lot of people who come with the thought that we are going to, to dominate each other. <laughs> Hmm. But then they are very, they actually end up being very happy that this was ve a very different experience because some, uh, some people come with this like thought that we're going to do some, uh, some shibari for power play, but then it ends up being half of the lesson of self ties. And then you, you switch partners too. So you have to like switch the energies all the time and you have to get used to it. So you can like, um, uh, work better with your tying if you don't know the person and get more careful about it. And then they see some other side of Shibari. <laughs> they see being a little bit more like thoughtful, very careful and uh, given the side of Shibari that's just given love. So mm -hmm. I think this is why they come back. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. For sure. I mean, Kat got, you was that the first, I, I did a, uh, I did a tie for Kat in uh, in Queensland oh, yeah. recently just for a photo. It was just like we're doing photo shoots. So all my shibari uh, that I've done has just been by Mark. So you've tied me up. Um, oh, actually, no, you didn't tie me up. It was um, our other friend that tied me up. You you did that demonstration on a no, Zoom call. It was, and it was you and your oh, friend, yes, our friend, the tall I one. And um, yes, yes. It, it was you had me and this other girl and you were tying up our legs or something hmm. like that. Yeah. That was the only time. So, so what, it was only twice think? and it's been by you both times. Yeah, I'm curious what Kat's <laughs> thoughts on this are. Like, is that because we didn't really chat about this? It was just like a photo shoot, essentially. Is is this something that you think you'd like and want want to explore? I'm curious from like your perspective. Yeah, so I'm very, I'm so interested in this interview because I literally know nothing about Shibari. I know Mark, you're very very yeah. into it. Um, I only know from yeah. what I hear from <laughs> what you tell me, but I am I am interested in because well one of the well so what you were saying before the the fashion photography element of it that looks really cool i have a few friends that i follow on instagram that are quite into it and they do some of the more fashion photos and stuff and they all look really cool uh me personally i like the kink side of it like i <laughs> i like mm, the uh yeah. the just the being tied up and like like that i can't run away especially with the more complicated ties like i think yeah. mark when when you and your friend were tying us up like you um you like tied up on knees and it was literally like we like couldn't even we couldn't even crawl away so it was yeah. like, I think it was like, like that's, that's very kinky yeah. if i can't even crawl away yeah. yeah um but yeah no so i'm i'm super interested in it. i think it's i think it's pretty yeah. and uh yeah i think it's kinky as 
Yeah, I think I think if a lot of people were aware of this, a lot more it, it, a lot more people would be into it. And it's like Anastasia mentioned. I think like the issue becomes what you face Anastasia, right? Which is like, how the fuck do I get into this? Like, I don't want some like <laughs> random dude off Instagram hitting me up being like, yeah, let's tie. You're like, oh, that's true, Tommy. <laughs> and, yeah, and there's not many classes around. There's not many. So yeah, it, it becomes uh, it becomes tough. But uh, talking about photography, I, I noticed on your website and Instagram, you have some amazing photos, by the way. They, they look yeah. incredible. Um, so when when did this start? Like, w- was this right at the beginning of your journey where you're like, fuck, these ties look really cool. Let's take some photos. Or did that come a little bit after? You know, it actually started from photography. Yeah, I wanted to, when, I mean, w- when I tied at first, I just wanted to take photos of this because I thought that this these textures are very new. And I mm. was into photography before before Shibari. So mm. I got really into taking photos of the work and getting some uh, photographer friends to come over when I tie and they could take photos of it. And then it just really grew on me and I decided that I will, I will make Shibari beautiful. Because, you know, mm. when I Googled at that point, most stuff that came up was pretty violent. So if you, you Google Shibari, you see mostly like black and white, some very, very much like violent photos. Now it's a little different. Now mm-hmm. other stuff shows up too. <laughs> it yeah. Yeah, it's becoming very intro. popular now. I don't think it, was, it wasn't popular like, like no, that long ago, it. was it? Because I only heard of it recently no. when you started doing it, Mark. And before that, I never, mm. I never knew that it was even a thing until maybe a couple of years ago. It would have been when I met Mark that I even knew what yeah. it was. It was very yeah. underground, I think, because people yeah. were thinking about it mostly in the in the kinky way. But now, now it changes. The, the perception changes a little bit. This is why more people can can enjoy different sides of shibari. So I really like the kinky side of it too. But it is way easier to show the kinky side through the other ones because yeah, it's I actually never do. thought about it the way that you were explaining it. Like your um, what, how, what did you say? You said it was like meditative. I was like, oh, that's so interesting. I guess it would be. It would be like kind of like crochet, Mm -hmm. right? You know, when you crochet something, you're there kind of for hours doing that. It's like (laughs) the same thing, right? Yeah. (laughs) I love that explanation. Yeah. I think there's like. But crochet is basically shibari with picks. Basically. And just. (laughs) <laughs> I, I love that we took a very BDSM practice and turned it into crochet. That's awesome. <laughs> it's it's basically the same thing. Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. I'm agreeing with you. Yeah, I think there's that's the thing I like about shibaris is like it, it's how you want to express it, yeah. right? Because you can have some people that want it just as a self-tie. They want it for like the beauty of it, like the the mm. photography aspect of it, like the the nice lines and the way it likes a, a model look, for example. Or it could be like the the torture aspect, which is probably what I'm a little bit more into, right? Which is like mm-hmm. bringing out those emotions, the BDSM side of things. So I think that's great. When it comes to the photography, because I mean, the, the photos look so good. What do, you, what do you focus on in those scenes? Like, what are you trying to create? Because if you're just taking a portrait, for example, you you know, you want to make sure the model, uh, you know, you're worried about their facial expressions, things like that. What are you trying to express when you're taking photography with Shibari? Because I think it becomes somewhat like less about the model sometimes and more about the rope, would you say? Not really, no. I feel mm. that uh, it is always about the model because uh, when somebody mm. comes to me for the photo shoot, it's uh, I'm trying to tell their story through rope. So okay. rope is, uh, just nice. a, is, is just a medium for... For, for expressing th- something because rope can be a very good addition to a story about connection of that person to something else that is really helpful. Like, for example, sometimes I have photo shoots when people want to show how vulnerable they can be. And then, <laughs> and then we can do the, the like very, basic shibari okay. ties the, the 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 japanese ones with the with the hands in the back and like the, the most the classics and then mm. uh, while i tie people get into the nice like mood and then i don't really need to guide the facial expressions because mm. it's, it's just there because they're feeling through it and my job is just to take to set up to set up the lights right and take and take that photo but if it's a little bit different for example there's a story about somebody's hobby or something like that then we would use rope not just as a pretty harness right we would use it to connect some things in the picture 
Mm. And yeah, it all be- depends on the person who we're shooting. Yeah. But I could for sure say that it's more about the person than about the knots. Yeah, that's yeah, perfect. I like that explanation. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. To sell the courses, though, I do need those photos that have amazing ties. And that yeah, I do with my friends' models, yes. <laughs> yes, yeah. No, of course. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking about it in the way of like almost, um, for me, I was like looking at the perspective of like, let's say like fashion photography or something where it's like, mm-hmm. okay, we're, we're worried about the dress. Whereas uh, I see the way you're thinking about it is like, I'm worried about the story. I'm worried about like the emotions oh, no, in the Mark. photo. And it's like ropes. The, the medium for that. So that's cool. I like that. That's, uh, that's pretty neat. What is your most like interesting, would you say like memory or story from your Shapari journey? Like what, what is something that stands out for you? The one when I realized that I really want to do Shibari photography for telling stories. That was mm-hmm. the moment in, um, in Japan that was 2019. Oh no, no. 2018. Doesn't matter. But uh, we were in the middle of the the busiest streets of Osaka with my now husband and uh, of a friend. And she was all tied up in the middle of the street. There were so many people. And the policeman was approaching us like five times. But I didn't want to give up because I really thought we need this shot because I wanted to show that in this super busy city, you have to like find time for yourself and stuff. I was super passionate about this. And then after we took a shot, we, we had to run away from that policeman. <laughs> and then, <laughs> like, so worth it. it was totally so worth was, it. This was and in the middle of pub- the public. Like the, in the middle yeah, of the street. That was also in a very busy time of the day because we needed to get a long exposure shot of people walking through the through the crosswalk. Mm. Yeah. And was it like what kind of a tie was it like? Was it something like super complicated? That was just a lot of rope wrapped very tight around the model. Mm. It wasn't very oh, complicated. Wow. It just looks like a lot, a lot of rope. Yeah. And a lot of rope. Like, <laughs> I can imagine the police officer would have been like, what is going on? Like, does this what person need help? What the fuck is going on? Blink twice like, if you want me to what? arrest this girl. Because <laughs> they saw us on the side streets too, because we were taking photos mm. of other knots, and that was the last shot. And even when we were taking those photos, yeah. they would still come to us and like, hey, guys, you can't do that here. Please move. And we moved. Oh, they were. <laughs> <laughs> so they told you you can't do it. You just moved to another area and kept going. Exactly. Were, were, just, you, were you yeah. getting like a crowd? Were people like standing around and watching, thinking like, what's going on here or not really? On the last shot, yes, because the last shot was very, very like explicit. Yeah, it was like yeah. in the middle of the street, all tied up. But the other ones, no, not really. In Japan, it's really easy to take weird photos because nobody usually cares because they think they will invade your private space so they don't really yeah do. the, the Japanese time, people yeah they're quite polite <laughs> yeah and if they want to take a picture they would ask you they would never just take a picture walking by you no they would it's because there was just some kinky kinky shit in Japan I feel like someone getting tied up in oh, the street yeah. would not be the weirdest thing going on there <laughs> <laughs> they're probably like okay yo, go for it. Oh, on the yeah. street <laughs> it's pretty weird on the street kinky stuff doesn't go up <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, there are, it's a yeah, different world there. <laughs> so Anastasia, you mentioned your partner. Like, what's his views on Shibari? Does he also tie? I'm not sure if I know this. Does, does he tie as well? Or? Uh, he knows some ties. He knows some. Yeah. But he doesn't really tie only only if I ask him to. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> You're like, it's time. Uh, yeah, it's cool. and does he, does he enjoy tired. being... Does huh? he enjoy being tied? Sorry, does he enjoy being tied by you as well? Or, yeah. Yeah, I um, used to tie him couple. up and sometimes. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> sometimes he gets very busy at work and he gets mm. just too, I'd say, overwhelmed with stuff. And then the rope can help. It can relax. Mm. It, yeah. it, it can help him relax. But it's nothing complicated, too. It's just a little bit of rope put in like him with, with himself. And yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it is something uncomfortable, so there is some element of stretching in it, and he concentrates on something else. Mm. Then the thoughts just move. (laughs) Yeah, no, I like that. It's nice. And I I noticed on uh, on your website as well, you have you're running like retreats essentially. So you're running like classrooms, uh, but I didn't know about your retreats. Can you tell us a little bit about those and what they involve? Oh yeah, now I. Actually, on April 2nd, from April 2nd to April 5th, I am having my second retreat here in, oh, um, nice. in Mexico. 
So the first one was uh, a collaboration with um, with one Tantrika friend. So we were uh, doing a two day retreat. It's like a full days of workshops, just like one hour for, for resting because we, we, we want it all, right? <laughs> and uh, uh, we were connecting the Shibari and Tantra and trying to, to show people the central aspect of it while learning mm-hmm. the simple ways to tie. So working with rope, but mm-hmm. not doing anything complicated, trying to really get into the communication with rope, not into learning how to tie like the most complicated tie ever. Because those people who actually went to my first retreat were the students who already know how to tie, but they don't really know how to communicate while they tie. So mm-hmm. we made a retreat that was about that. And uh, the one now is a little bit different. It's also about se- central aspect of Shibari, but we um, this time we're doing it with um, a Kami. She's a tea master and also a, a conscious touch ma- master. So we are combining these two, but we are a little bit more concentrating on the um, Shibari practical side too. So we are going to learn more knots. Yeah. This one is three days, so we have more time. Yeah. We're doing that too. And uh, I think it's very important to add some Mexican things to the retreat Mm. that's in Mexico. So we have Mm. the cacao ceremony, sound healing, and um, I offer some other stuff occasionally, but, you know, it depends. Yeah, fuck, that sounds pretty cool. Yes, that's so fun. Yeah, very excited about that. (laughs) Yeah, is this like, uh, who's it aimed for? Are you aiming at couples or is it like singles coming? Is it anyone? Like what type of people do you get to these retreats? This is actually aimed at anyone because this, uh, I'm planning to do one just for couples, but Mm. this one is going to be for for anyone. It doesn't matter couple or single because you can explore the sensuality with yourself or with others. And even if you don't know people, you still can kind of like have it, have those thoughts going through your mind, but you don't really have to experiment on the unknown people if you feel uncomfortable with this. But yeah, we try to make it convenient for everybody this time. <laughs> yeah, nice, nice. Yeah, I think, I think it's cool. I think there are a lot of similarities with the principles of Tantra and perhaps like the principles of Shibara that we've kind of spoken about. Like we've had, uh, we've done an interview with a guy named Timo who mm-hmm. is, is, you know, taught everyone in an audience about Tantra and if you haven't seen it, you can check it out. But uh, yeah, so that's interesting. So how, what, what are some of the principles? Like how would you bring um, Tantra into Shibari? Is this things like, you know, grounding techniques or like eye gazing before like tying? Like what, what, what type of elements are you bringing into the Shibari? You know, it's it's uh, all all that you talked about. Those elements, mm-hmm. absolutely. We bring the, the the breathing techniques too, so you can mm-hmm. ground yourself better. And uh, the last day, we had the like, explanation of the colors of tantra. And for each okay. color of tantra, you create a tie and a feeling, so it resonates mm-hmm. with the color of tantra. That's awesome. Yeah, I like that idea. I think in, in one of your classes, you did this where. It, uh, if I'm remembering correctly, like we, we pulled out cards and I think yes. it had like an emotion on there. Yeah. And then it's like you, you tie it to that, to that emotion. So I, th- I think that's great. And I think like that is a good training ground for when you are actually tying a model and you think, what do I want to create here? Like what, mm-hmm. what's it's, as you said, it's not just about the knots. So no, super interesting. What, what advice would you have for guys, girls, anyone that wants to get into to Shibari that is listening to this, that have never heard it before and is like, fuck, this sounds cool. <laughs> what do I do? What would you say to them? Watch some Shibari sessions first. Watch some Shibari sessions of different masters and see different styles. So you see the options of what can be done. Mm. And uh, then try to find a... A course, if you are in a big city, you can find a real life course. If you have this opportunity, take it. It's, it will be worth it. The real life class is, uh, is very, very important. Even if you have done, for example, my giant online course, it is mm-hmm. way better to come in person and then you will learn so many details. And, uh, the, the, just the personal touch is very important here. Because when you learn online, even from like YouTube videos, from actual courses, whatever, it's a little different, right? 
because mm. nobody can can fix what you did. And if you did something a little bit wrong, probably when when you just die on the floor, it wouldn't matter that much. But if you are getting into suspension, then please go get a teacher. <laughs> yeah. Shibari is very dangerous. I, I always repeat this again and again because yeah. it's, yeah. Yeah, it is. Kat, would you be interested in learning to title or are you just enjoying the idea of the model aspect? Uh, I have no interest in tying anyone up. I would really <laughs> like to be tied. Yeah. yeah, I would. I would be tied for sure. But I have zero. Yeah. I'm not. I'm. A, I'm a sub. I'm not like a dom. I don't really yeah. get. Yeah. So I have no Anastasia, interest in tying. You have people. Advice. I don't do that at work. <laughs> would you have advice for Kat, for example? So say say you're someone like you're a girl that wants to essentially like model and be a bottom. Mm. Uh, would you have any advice for them for like finding people that they can? Tr- perhaps trust and are safe with and what is shibari modeling even a thing yeah uh, is that like a real thing i would assume it would just be like girls okay. that you know or something would just come and model or whatever well in my case yes but if you are like in, in a bigger city or if you are in in japan in japan there are girls that actually like consider themselves uh, fetish models and fetish models sometimes are shibari models too. And then this is their job to model for shibari masters. Oh, and, wow. Uh, they what a job. To do that. It is they a, get paid yeah, to just get tied up. Oh, my God. Well, I yeah. Like, <laughs> 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 yeah. Sounds like an alright gig. <laughs> Modeling for some of the guys is pretty challenging, you know. They do some crazy things and they... Like in the West, we really are very, very careful, and we're like, "Oh, this is getting blue. Like, let's put her down." In Japan, they don't yeah. really do that. So I've got a common man question for you, uh, which probably a lot of people listening will probably want to know as well. What What is the most? Is there in Shibari? Is there like a a move or a tie that is like that's like the most dangerous thing that you just shouldn't do, or that is reserved for like the grandmasters or something? Super dangerous tie. Let's see. I'd say some people have the the neck, like the the breastplate, and they put the rope on the neck, and then they put some like stone on the neck, going like that down. And this, I would say, is reserved for the grandmasters, yes, or for the yeah for the grand f- f- fetishist models who are very sadistic. <laughs> yeah, because Kate, you mentioned earlier about. Someone, they, they, I think there's been like one person that's died in Shibari. Yeah, because I swear I've heard some with, stories from someone yeah, about it was with, something happening. Yeah, it was essentially, if for memory, um, is he had two models suspended and there was neck rope. And I forget exactly what happened, but like one of the models had fallen and it, no. it, it basically, yeah. So, uh, oh, no. there, there's been like what, yeah, so it, it's dangerous, right? And, uh, you gotta be careful, but yeah, you can look up, um, anyone like watching, like you can look up online and as Anastasia was mentioning, there's some like extreme examples, like modeling for it's not easy depending on the time, right? Easy. Like it comes down to no. flexibility, strength, like endurance. So, uh, yeah, it, it can it can be tough, but it's it's yeah. it's nice to watch. It's Why do people watch. use the rocks? So um, I'm just thinking, uh, I've seen, like I've seen a few photos where yeah, people have they use rocks. Is that just to like make you bend further no. when you're suspended? <laughs> okay. No, it's <laughs> common man no. over here. More pressure because uh, sometimes you would want to have even more pressure than you already have because you, your own weight already pushes on the ropes. Right, so like you suspend it and you, you you push on the ropes and the ropes kind of like get get into you, let's say. And then when you have rocks, there's more weight, so you feel the ropes even more on the body. Is it does it is it to make the rope look t- like a tighter look? Is that the point or no? That's the feeling. That's to oh, it's make the feeling. Oh, okay. So if I'm yeah. suspended in the air and I'm like, I you know what, this isn't enough for me. Let's go. Let's go yes. hardcore. Just throw some rocks on me. For the rocks, yes. Okay. All right. So, so it's the model going now. Let's let's amp this up a notch. I'm suspended in the air. It's not enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not enough. I need to be heavier. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Because there's a there's a like torture side of rope and like a predicament side of rope as well. Mm-hmm. Which yeah, is I like think a, I would like whole, that. See, that's why I'd like to get tied up. Yeah. I think. <laughs> yeah, and not yeah. really doing no, the time but would like to get tied up oh, oh yeah, no, I, yeah. I think so the only thing that annoys me is like oh so okay well this is a question that i have is um i feel like a lot of people listening or even like me i guess as well when i first heard of it is it, it, when you think shabari you maybe 
would yeah think straight away uh, like BDSM or like sexual kind of things. So for me, like if I was to want to get tied up, it would kind of be in the bedroom and hopefully it would lead into sex after. <laughs> um, but I guess that does <laughs> I get that probably doesn't really come into your practice. So it's the, the sexual element is probably not there. It could be. It just depends. If uh, somebody comes to me with the like um, for the private class and a couple, and they want to explore the sexual energy of of shibari, then then yes, I teach that because I do have some experience with that. But it's not my main focus for sure. Not yeah. Yeah. Would you get into BDSM eventually? Is that like on the cards? I- I am actually going from the BDSM. This is why I'm oh. not going. It. <laughs> oh, I'm okay, fun. fun. That. <laughs> and did you used to do shibari in the BDSM scene? Yeah, very, very similar. Yeah, that was okay. something I used to do when I was starting and I was not doing the right things. And that was not something that was a good thing to do at all. Yeah. Because I thought, you know, I thought that I was really into it, but then it just felt wrong at some point. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Go, so I'd like this, to dive um, a bit deeper into that. Like what? Yeah, oh, maybe that's what I was, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I was just going to ask more questions about that too. I was going to ask, um, was this like personal BDSM or were you like a dom or something? That was more personal, but um, I used to do some like, sessions with people that wanted to explore the like the being a sub but I did a couple and I realized that I'm not good at it and I don't really want to get good at it because like you know like you can learn but I just felt that it's I really don't feel it and uh but some people would just like text me and be like hey I noticed you do rope I would really love to be like tied by you and do whatever you want and I was like oh cool but but um but yeah that, not really cool it didn't work for me at all because <laughs> mm. I felt like yeah. that was mostly like just me trying to do something that they ask for but at the same time I was not enjoying it and I was like kind of lying to myself about it and uh, mm. but luckily I got over it very fast and I figured that's not my thing <laughs> mm. No, it's fair. So how do, how do you, I'm curious, like for your own perception, when you're tying someone, what energy do you feel then? Is it, uh, I mean, obviously it depends who you're tying, I understand. But I, I think for a lot of people that are riggers, it does come from that, let's say, more dominance side of the energy where I'm in control and I'm going to make sure like I get what I want out of this. And obviously with any form of like Dom Sub and BDSM, you also care about the other person. I'm wondering where that energy comes from from you. So if it isn't from like this very like let's say dominant place that like we consider with BDSM, what type of energy are you feeling? What are you what are you feeling when you're when you're tying? Kind of like I'd say healing point. Cause mm-hmm. um to me it's an exchange of energy with another person and uh when when i tie for not for a photo shoot because you know the photo shoot ties are usually very different yeah Hmm. (laughs) but if i don't tie four photos then um i tie for emotion and then Hmm. it is a very interesting feeling when you tie somebody that that felt like they needed it for a long time Hmm. and then you're your connection becomes closer and then you feel their emotions and then you can use your energy to help them let it go, you know, to help Mm -hmm. them let all these emotions come out. And uh, I feel like at some sessions when people start laughing or they start crying, this is when it is the most successful because then I can, I can really feel that the ropes and the process help them. Sometimes people fall asleep, <laughs> mm-hmm. which is also very good. They get super, super calmed down and then they can nap for like 10, 15 minutes and then wake up with a lot of new energy and, and uh, be ready to, to go do some new stuff. It's, it's amazing. So, yeah, for me, it's, it's trying, to, trying to help people collect the energy and let it go, whatever they don't need. Yeah, so maybe like more of a nurturing type of space it sounds mm. like right like a very healing um yeah. that's nice 
I like that. So what are your what are your plans moving forward? So you have the online course, um, which is great. Uh, I've been through I've been through some of it. You have your um, your retreats with the with the tantra. Like, what are your plans moving forward into the future with Shibari? Like, where where do you want this evolve to? Where do you where do you want to take this? Mm. Well, I think that my goal is to probably have a little bit less of the social media thing because this is draining me pretty much. Oh, really? But since I have a lot of, since I have the courses now, I want to make uh, a couple more courses and translate them to, to two more languages. Because, for example, I have the course in English, but then I also have a course in Russian. And the course in Russian is a little bit different because of the specifics of the culture. There are some things that need to be explained more or less in the certain language. So I think that this Can is Can you give an example of that? Can you give an example so of that in I'm, 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 Yeah, I'd say I was like, oh, I just thought it'd be like directly translated. Well, I guess they probably wouldn't understand much of the emotional side of it, maybe as much. They're a yes, little bit more stern. Talk about that way more because uh, the audience is uh, newer to Shibari. And they need a little bit more explanations about why we do this and uh, what do you feel and what you can feel, what is weird about it, or like, you know, those kind of things. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right, but I, I think that I'll yeah, be a bit less open, I think. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So I was thinking that the next step will be to get out to the bigger city and, uh, get back to the uh, exhibitions because I used to, before COVID, I used to have exhibitions with installations and uh, that really made me feel happy. So I hope to get back to that because uh, I want to show Shibari more than just on, on photos and on Instagram, right? It mm. needs to be bigger. And uh, Would you I come to Australia? We do. I've we actually been- have a... We have a um, an expo in Australia called Sexpo, and uh, there was a shibari, a few shibari um, exhibits like on the stage. There was a, one of the stages there, and um, when I went last year, there was a girl who was like hung from the ceiling by her hair and was like swinging around the room. It was pretty cool. <laughs> nice. Yeah, someday I'll make it to Australia. Yeah, the exhibitions that I that I did were. A little different, so I never really took part in a Shibari Expo or a Kink Expo. I was just in one of the uh, modern art galleries in in Russia. Uh, oh, that's with cool. A friend. We did the, the the sculptures of certain body parts with ropes, and uh, then the the Mexico City that was uh, showing the connection between Day of the Dead and like the, the perception of people of it with rope. <laughs> yeah, so things like that but i would love to visit some of those fairs you know like the big king, the big king fairs i've, I've mm. never done that <laughs> there would be heaps in vegas i think you're pretty close to vegas um living in mexico i feel like there would be so many there uh-huh mm. someday someday i'll make yeah, it one day <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. They definitely come to Australia. It's amazing here. You'll yeah, love yeah. It. You'll love it. <laughs> yeah, we're getting, we're getting more into it in Australia, I think. Okay. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of studios around here. Um, yeah, heaps. Yeah, for sure. It's growing. It's growing. Um, okay, do you have any questions uh, left over, Kat, before we finish up? I actually have a question for you, Mark. This goes right back oh, okay. uh, from a com- Ooh, the conversation that we're having at the beginning, and she was talking about how to do Shabari, you kind of have to do it on yourself first to kind of see what it mm. feels like. Mark, have you – you haven't been tied up. There's no way. I have. I have. No, you haven't. Do you haven't. know, do you know what happened? You've been suspended in the air. So, I don't know who you have it. Listen, listen to this. I came to, uh, so I, I, I've been doing Shabari for a little bit, came to Anastasia's class and I came for a background of, it was like you were the tie, like you were the rigger, right? You tied. So I would bring like a model to a class, right? So there was no like ever swapping. It was any like everyone was a rigger. Everyone had their model. And obviously like when I first started, I was doing like ties myself to learn them and whatnot, but I'd never been tied ever. And so I, I, I come to class and it's like, yeah, essentially you, you swap out and you get tied. And I agree with Anastasia. Like, I think it's good to be able to experience what it feels like. Even like back when I was like nursing in hospital, I always liked the idea of like w- whatever I can experience for myself that I'm going to give it to my patients, I want to. Now, obviously there's limitations to that, but I think it actually is super helpful in Shibari to be able to have that experience of knowing how tight it actually feels 
what you're actually going through when you do get suspended, what your hands start to feel like when they do start to go a little bit numb or you are losing that sensation. So, yeah, I mean, I, I liked it from a academic point of view of understanding all of that, but I have not been tight since. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just, it's, yeah, it's just not for me. But It's important to try, but then when you try, yeah. you realize that if it's for you or not for you. But yeah. I think that everybody should try to be on the yeah. other side, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I think it's yeah, I think it's good. Um, but yeah, don't don't get any ideas, cat. It's uh, it's not happening again anytime soon. <laughs> I want to see you be uh, suspended from the air. Not a chance. <laughs> not a chance. <laughs> if not Anastasia happened. ever comes to Sydney, that's what we're doing. Not happening. Mark will be yeah, suspended from the air. Um, um, live track, on air, live much. on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, Anastasia, thank you so much for coming on. How can uh, how can people find you? What's the best way for them to to get access to your teachings? Oh, the best way is to go on voodooropes.com. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> well, there. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we'll put a link up there. You have your course. Um, it's 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 actually really extensive. It's really great. Anyone who uses Shibari, you can go check that out. If anyone is in around Mexico, it sounds like you have some retreats that are probably coming up in the in the future as well. So um, again, thank you so much for coming on. Um, I appreciate it. I'm sure our audience loved hearing about Shibari. So thank you again. Thank you. It was very fun talking to you too. <laughs> Cheers.